The following is a presentation of the HAN Network, the leader for local news, sports, and more in southwestern Connecticut. Good evening and welcome to the Darien Ice House as you are watching the HAN Network's Game of the Week featuring two of the top three teams in the state of Connecticut. It's the number one Ridgefield Tigers and the number three New Canaan Rams. I'm Frank Renito standing alongside John Kovach as we get ready for one of the most highly anticipated hockey games of the FCAC regular season, John. The last two remaining unbeaten teams in conference play fighting it out now for that coveted number one spot. Game was originally scheduled for January 23rd. We had bad weather that day. It's postponed. This is certainly worth the wait. When you look back on the schedule, you'll see these two teams met on December 28th. The Richfield Tigers, a 4-2 winner with an empty net goal that day. And right away, what jumps off the page is how the Tigers won. They capitalized on the man advantage, the power play, the difference in that one. We expect much of the same tonight. Right away, let's talk about it. Special teams will be the key to victory today. Special teams will absolutely be the key. I saw this Ridgefield team on January 21st. I went up to West Haven to watch them play West Haven at the Bennett Rink. Frank, without question, the most physical game that I've seen all year. They were throwing the body from the get-go. There were some penalties in the second period, but they charged the net hard. That paid off for them. And while it was a 3-2 Ridgefield win, those two goals were in the, fu were, were in the final 38.4 seconds, two power play goals with West Haven having pulled its goalie. And speaking of power play goals, let's welcome in the third member of our crew now, Chris, uh, Chris Kalen. Chris, power play goals were not something we saw against the New Canaan Rams on Saturday, despite the fact that they gave up six power plays to rival Darianne. Yeah, Frank, but the thing is, you know, Darianne is not quite the team that Ridgefield is. So if New Canaan is going to win this game, you cannot go to the box six times and even give Ridgefield 40 seconds of five-on-three play. So for New Canaan, they're going to have to play a cleaner game. They're probably going to have to mask, match Ridgefield physically because, we, like you said, Ridgefield loves to throw the body around. It's been that kind, that kind of team under Sean Gallagher for years. They use the body, soften you up, and then get you tentative, and then that's when they take it to you. They're going to hard charge the net, the same thing like New Canaan. But for New Canaan, it's going to be, can you contain those, two li those first two score lines for Ridgefield? You know the first two lines for New Canaan can score and how the defensemen are going to handle Ridgefield's scoring lines as well. And Chris, we have seen so much of that top line from New Canaan this year of Gelnaw, Hill, and Gamble. But against Darianne, it was the second line that really proved to be the difference. Granito, Adding, and McMahon, they were all over the ice and, and scored three of the four goals for New Canaan. Yeah, and it was the speed from that second line that created the turnovers and then created the scoring opportunities off those turnovers especially the two goals in the first period. And that second goal, which came off the turnover, which Gunnar Granito scored solo, that's what really kind of stymied Darianne and took them out of the game mentally. As hard as they tried to work to get back into it, it just seemed like that 2-1 to one lead was just really insurmountable. And looking at the goalie matchup, John, you've seen Sean Keegan's already this year. He's in a tough task with depth scoring down the lineup for the Rams, but also defense who are capable of scoring. And for Peter Windis, it's been one recurring theme, rebound control. That's the only knock we've had on the senior. And he looked solid with his rebound control Saturday against Darien, and it shows in a 4-1 win. You've seen the senior Keegan's. What's the scouting report on Sean? I thought he looked solid against West Haven. There were only two before those two that got in in essentially the six on four with the goalie pole power plays. Um, there were two bizarre, bizarre bounces that almost resulted in goals in, in the first period. Um, one of which 
rolled down the goal line behind him and then somehow got fished out by a stick and another that hit him from behind but then kind of came five hole the opposite way out toward the uh out towards center ice so two near misses there then really nothing until you know, he was he was solid until those two power play goals. We mentioned that both teams undefeated in conference play. New Canaan obviously losing to Ridgefield earlier. That's one of their two losses. The other lost against Xavier. Ridgefield's only loss this season also is against Xavier, who is currently number two in the power rankings. If you look at the D1 unofficial standings, Northwest Catholic leads the state with 95 points. Ridgefield in second with 92. Then Xavier with 90 West Haven 74, New Canaan in fifth with 73. They've got a 10-point lead over Notre Dame and West Haven. Both New Canaan and Ridgefield now with five games left. Ridgefield will have to play Fairfield Prep again, which will be a huge game, and New Canaan will play Xavier again. But those down the road, focusing on tonight, John, what are the keys for both teams in their success? You've got to withstand the physicality of the other team. The goalies are going to have to, st to, to stand up and play well, and you're going to have to crash the net hard. I think we're going to see that both ways. It should be a lot of fun. Let's step aside quickly. When we get back, we'll have the opening puck drop right here on the HAN Network. Back from the Darien Ice House as we get set for the opening faceoff. Starting for the Rams, it will be the McMahon adding Granito line with Morris and Hayes on defense. For the Richfield Tigers, Mateo Van Wees, Landon Byers, Jeff Priscilla, Harrison Chuma, and Jack McGeary as we are underway with the Tigers winning the opening draw. They wear the all-black uniform versus the Rams' white tops, black pants, and white bottoms. Tigers moving from left to right on your screen to start, and the Rams from right to left. I was very impressed with the puck movement and communication offensively and defensively when I saw this Ridgefield team against West Haven. My understanding from what I was told talking to one of the parents, these kids have played together for years. They've won titles as in Pee Wee and Might and other divisions, and a lot of them, this is their sport. It's hockey and nothing else, and it shows. There's a skill level, and there is a... Uh, fluidity to what they do quick opening shifts for both units as they go to line changes early on these were the two early season favorites to win the conference and they've lived up to the hype to this point in the season as an icing here with 1407 remaining uh right now the idea around the fc act there's the top two teams and then the rest of the pack right you've got these teams separated by two points new canaan with a game in hand and then Eight points leads the other division. And the bodies are beginning to hit the floor already here in early in the first period. And an opportunity now down the left wing boards. It's Will Forrest who spins one towards the front of the net. Shot on goal. And Windis will make the first save after a shot from Jack Stafford. And he pinned that under his leg pads. He can't let those rebounds get away like he's had trouble with in prior games. Gelnaw, Gamble, and Hill on the ice versus Cullinan, Stafford, and Forrest for the Tigers. And here is a shot on goal. Blocker save there made off the stick of Cullinan. Behind the net, it's Forrest, and Teddy Hood delivers a big check. Teddy Hood very physical against Darien. As this one's sent down the length of the ice, we'll go for... And icing again, and Cato, the first big hit of the night, and it comes from Teddy Hood. No surprises there. No, absolutely not. He's one guy that's, you know, when you get into the corner of the boards, get rid of the puck because you know he's coming for you. And nine times out of ten, he's going to win that battle for the puck in the corner. So a little bit of mixing and matching here as we see Coach Sean Gallagher come back with his top line. It's Glover, Hart, along with Grisset now for the Rams as this one's sent wide again. Pickering trying to win a race, but he lost it as the Tigers come up momentarily. 
along the left wing boards and Grisset sends ahead for Glover who's got Hart down the left wing side. Intercepted there, stepping up was Chuma. And then it's Pickering who retreats through his own zone and plays out to neutral zone for safety. Umpton on Winsdis, holds for a moment and he's gonna take the whistle and a defensive drone zone draw coming now for the Rams. I think it was wise for him to freeze that puck. He had a player coming in on him. Let things reset, get a change and get some fresh legs and get it out of your zone. The long pass is in the neutral zone you've got to be careful with. It's just more opportunity for it to be intercepted. And now we'll get our first look at the Richfield Tigers' third line. Charlie Luff, Jeff, Joe Signorelli, and Matt Walker out there. As working down the right wing boards was Gunnar Granito. Holds on to possession and then sends behind the end line where McMahon, that's George McMahon, goes to work. Trying to leave for adding, but he couldn't get there in time as Signorelli came up with it. Quite an effort by Granito to win that race to the puck and then fight for control of it. Morris blew a tire that time and a player goes down to the ice as there's some pushing and shoving and a delayed penalty coming as Windus holds on. They're going to get Morris here. Looks like it'll be a cross check and that is indeed the call. Obvious right out in the open he comes across with the stick. Duquesne doing exactly what neither team can afford to do here and that's go a man down. And Chris, I thought they might have been able to get a penalty for tripping when they first came into the zone, but it was the second shot, the cross check that they called. I agree with you. I thought I had seen a trip. Then what happened was Tyler Hill just got frustrated and he just hit him, hit it. I couldn't tell who it was, but just hit somebody up on the boards with the cross check. Well, I think there was a trip there, but I think they were letting it go. They were letting them play. They did it down the far end as well. But I think that cross check was just so obvious they left no choice but call it. And they're going to try to keep a lid on things. They'll let it be physical, but it can't get over the top. So 12-25 remaining in our first penalty of the night against the Rams as the Tigers go to the power play. Byers playing catch with Van Wees to the slot, and it's kicked aside. Good save from Windis off the attempt by Priscilla. Up top, Van Wees tipped by Chu and another save. Rebound, another save, and it is not cleared out of the zone. Holding the line, Van Wees. A broken stick down on the play. They will say it was offside. Couple of huge saves from Windus right there. Big saves by Windus. That, that, uh, to me, that looked offsides. I saw white between the puck and the blue line. But look at the precision of that Ridgefield power play unit. Everybody knows where everybody else is. They move as a unit. They really taxed. Okay, they found openings and got two shots off. Windus came up big twice. And we saw there, Chris... Ridgefield using defenseman Harrison Chuma in front of the net, getting that size for the screen, and he almost scored on the redirect. Yeah, and you saw on the play, Jeffrey Pacella, his stick broke. He had to skate into the locker room to get a new piece of lumber. And we'll see another penalty coming here. This one will go against the Ridgefield Tigers. And it was this smart play and hustle of Anton adding, drawing that one. Chris, you've talked about Anton for a couple of games now. Uh, just an absolute game breaker is the senior transfer for the Rams. Yeah, he's the one guy. He uh, he's really working hard, and he's just made. He really has made that second line that much better. He's really a smart hockey player, making everything work. And we see you've got a cubicle mate now. Why don't you tell us who that is? Guys, it's William Forrest. He's going to go in for two minutes. I didn't quite catch what the penalty was. That was a hook. So four on four now for the next minute 15 as it's adding in Hill as the off angle shot goes off Keegan's stick and back to the neutral zone where Hood resets. Not much of an angle there for that shot. Uh, see Chuma controlling now. Looks to the far side and he finds his partner McGeary. Back and forth they play just inside their blue line before the stretch pass was cut off by Hood and sent down on Keegan's. 11-15 remaining, you're watching the HAN Network's Game of the Week, the number one Ridgefield Tigers and number three New Canaan Rams in a battle for number one in the FCAC. Uh, skating all the way around the net was Landon Byers. Up to the point, and McGeary let that one go. That was knocked down by his own man in front. That switch behind the net drew the whole defense toward the goal. That's a good shot from adding, stick to side by Keegan's. And now back the other way as we quickly use the open ice. Jack Stafford tried to step around Quinn Hayes, and he delivered a big hit. That draws a large applause from the crowd. Puck went into the netting, I believe. 
But you can see the open ice on display right now, Chris. Back and forth, a lot of transition and odd man opportunities. It's kind of like what we've gotten used to seeing out of New Canaan in the first few minutes of every game. That fast paced up and down. Uh, miscommunication that time from George McMahon. And Brooks Gamble as they tried the stretch pass there, but it goes for an icing. Eight seconds remaining on the New Canaan penalty. They will have a power play opportunity for 36 seconds when Morris comes out of the box. As winning that draw cleanly was Signorelli. Off a skate of McMahon, and the Tigers reset as another big check coming here. Webster read it beautifully that time, but a quick wrister fought off with the glove by Windis. Big hit, clean hit. And now the Rams go to the power play. McMahon controlling. Plenty of time as he skates down to the corner and works from right to left behind the net. Give and go they play. Off the boards, here's Hayes, who's going to let a one-timer go when it's off a stick and up into the netting with 10 minutes remaining. But you saw right there, it was Ben Webster just saw the buddy pass coming, read it beautifully, and a perfect check. Timed it upright like a defensive back, timing up a pass. Hit was so hard, it broke one of their sticks, I couldn't tell who. Second stick, we've seen fail a player here in these first five minutes. Slow pace of play compared to what we've seen this season, Chris, where there's usually that high energy at the start of these games. Yeah, guys, and that was Ben Webster. It looked like his stick broke right in his hand on that check. So 11 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Controlling behind the net is Trey Guthra. And then it is cleared out the length of the ice as Morris couldn't control that one. Hayes behind his net as Byers forces him to reverse back. Here's Glover controlling on the left wing boards. Byers takes that one away and sends all the way around for Trey Gertha. Time and space, but a good job by Quinn Hayes pinching at the blue line and holding. Here's Grisset in the corner. Working up the half wall, had it taken away, and then another check delivered. Uh, we thought we might see this physical play from the Ridgefield early on, John, but it's actually the Rams who have set the tone hitting-wise. Well, I think both teams are equally physical right now, and we saw New Canaan do this when Darien started out physical with them on Saturday. They ramped it up a notch. I think they had to expect it here in this second meeting with Ridgefield. Granito steps up and throws a weak shoulder into a Ridgefield Tiger as this one now goes behind the net and is controlled. Trey Gertha reverses all the way around. And waiting eagerly for that one was Van Wees. Tried to stick handle through a couple of defenders, but it failed him as Hood steps up to deliver another check with adding retreating to his own zone and playing catch with Webster. Low pass there and a high hit, no call, as Webster delivered a tough one on Stafford that time. He didn't get clean wood on it, so a puck just kind of trickled to the referee's skate blade. And Granito trying to chip up off the glass, but missed, and it's into the bench. So a face-off now to Windis' right with 8.31 remaining. A scoreless game. Now, and you see early on, I mean, when Forrest was in the penalty box, you heard the coach come over to him and told him, don't give these two officials any garbage because the one thing is they're two of the best officials in the state. They're going to call the game evenly. So they, what they don't want is players to lose their head early. Thank you, Chris, as Pickering tried to step up for that one but lost it in his feet. Just over seven minutes gone by as Gamble now has to go all the way back behind his own end. Coming to make a play on the puck there was Cullinan, but he was sandwiched between a couple of rams, and then Stafford took a check as well. Nothing easy right now in the life of a Tiger as the Rams delivering body checks left and right. Back to receive is Chuma with Hill applying pressure. And finally, some time and space for Ridgefield to break out. An Aaron pass was taken away, though, as Glover works down the end line. Shoved down from behind and loses control to Chuma. Coming to help this time, Signorelli. They battle to a side in the corner, and Hayes is able to hold the line. Stepping up, Matt Walker. He was taken down for a moment. Hayes Dove played the puck with his stick and then his body took out the Ridgefield player. Slowing things down is Drew Morris. 
Ryan Hart with it has got an opportunity as he looks ahead and here's adding. Adding on the breakaway. Quick wrister and he missed it off the crossbar. That one's going to haunt adding. Oh, he had him beat high on the glove side and it went off the crossbar and out of play. Chris? Yeah, and Keegan's just stared him down. He broke right in and Keegan's, Keegan's just stared him down and pretty much, you know, was just going to move in front of the puck. He was going to use the body no matter what. And he was able to get a little bit of the shoulder up on it and to deflect it off the post. So the best opportunity of the night, but the Swede unable to finish as we have 6.55 remaining. And here's Ben Webster who intercepts. Really almost a game of chicken there. And Keegan just, as Chris said, stayed with it. Arnito behind the net. Reverses down low as McMahon gives chase. Flipped up the boards, and Webster plays for adding. Back to Webster again, who winds up and lets the slapper go. And Keegan's with the glove save. Keegan's has not had to make many shots so far. Really, the shot count heavily in favor of Ridgefield, Chris, you would think. Guys, I've got the shot count at Ridgefield to six, New Canaan four. So, I mean, a lot of physical contact in the middle of the ice, a lot of high octane play, but not many, not many opportunities to score. Oh, and the majority of those shots coming on the Ridgefield power play, John. And for New Canaan, a couple of those shots from tough angles, so. Yeah, New Canaan's just trying to throw pucks at Keegan's, and they've done a few from some really obscure angles. As this one will go for another ice. You have to give a lot of credit early on to both defensive units. They've played aggressively and did a good job of holding the blue line in the offensive zone. I think if there's one thing I would change if I was either defensive unit, I think New Canaan's iced the puck a couple of times too many. And I think that's the aggressive passing style you're seeing. They haven't quite got the angle down yet, but they're looking to play it around the defense of Ridgefield and send their uh, wingers out to space. Well, we've seen them be so adept at clearing using the boards but in prior games here. this Their home games, they know how the, uh, how the boards are going to play. That puck was sent towards the front ice, but it was deflected off Forrest. Now the Tigers able to regroup. 5.50 remaining, 0-0 the score. As that one played by Forrest through the neutral zone, and then Pickering a quick pass up ahead. Gamble controls now and lets a wrister go that Keegan's gloves easily and will hold on to with a faceoff coming to his right. Yeah, Keegan ready for that just like a first baseman snags it. Both teams send out the checking lines now. Glover and Signorelli on the jaw. You've got Charlie Luft and Matt Walker on the wings for the Tigers before a quick change coming. No, they're going to say the hand was up. They'll have to stay. I really do like the pace that we're playing right now. Uh, it, uh, it's a physical game, but we're moving. There aren't a lot of stops except for those icings. And there have been times this year where you've seen almost too frantic of a pace at the yes. start of games. It's out of control. There has been a strong pace, good physical play. as an opportunity canceled out from the right of Keegan's. And now the Tigers moving up ice with Matt Walker. Hooked aside by Morris. Walker tried to play it off the boards. It took a funny bounce on him, and it actually ended up taking the puck away from himself. We've seen a couple players lose edges through the neutral zone. Is this one gloved down towards Glover? Trying to control it in front was Grisset, but he was canceled out. Here's Morris. Back behind the net. Chase Glover, who's really seen his play improve the past few weeks, looked really strong against Darianne on Saturday, but now an odd man rush. Van Wees with a quick wrister off the elbow with a net. Just let the snapshot go and missed by inches. Both teams now with one crossbar to their name as Van Wees again with speed down the right wing. Checked off by Hayes and coming to help is adding. Two Rams and one Tiger go to work in the corner. That's Forrest with adding and Hayes. As adding, finally able to come away from the scrum. And will send a rolling puck the length of the ice that goes for another stoppage with 4-14 remaining. Not his intent. I think he intended to pass it out to the blue line. It just never connected at the top end. 
And Chris, the best opportunity of the night so far for the Richfield Tigers. Yeah, and that puck just kind of like found its way along the boards. It got up on its side and just rolled on forever. And it was pretty much, unfortunately for New Canaan, it's like you said, they can't they can't connect on those long passes. They can't get it out. It just keep they keep coming up empty, and they end up starting off in their zone again. Good patience on the breakout from Webster as he connected with adding, but it was turned over at the blue line. And now Richfield's opportunity to regroup with 3.55 remaining. Looking up ahead as they connect with Stafford. Stafford towards the net, had it taken away, but they're going to get another penalty here. Looks like they got adding for a slash. Keegan's has fled the net, and now the Tigers with a man advantage that will be blown dead here. And that is indeed the call. They're going to say adding on a slash. Pre-lockout, you might have got away with that one. Possibly. So 3.38 remaining. Second penalty of the night against the Rams. And we talked about it before the game, John. Just penalties uh, will kill New Canaan tonight. You cannot allow Ridgefield to go to the power play. As that was the difference the first time these teams met. No, I'm really looking forward to watching this power play work again because it is so precise. Three shots the first time around. We'll see how they do this time. As Morris had to navigate his way around an official. But Quinn Hayes comes up with it and is able to clear the length of the ice. Duquesne and student sections looking for a call. I'm kind of surprised they didn't get one. A number of holds and uh, throws there. No call, letting them play. That was Landon Byers and Drew Morris who battled right in front of the student section and the officials. Now, New Canaan has excelled a man down. We've seen him score a five-on-three goal. I saw them score that against Greenwich a couple weeks ago. We also saw them score this past game on Saturday against Darianne in a five-on-four situation. Right, which they dominated. I really couldn't tell that they were a man down. I was saying all the way around the net this time is Parcella. Help coming from Chuma along with McGeary. And it's Van Wees at the point. I can catch with McGeary and a quick wrister was blocked by McMahon and then Gelnaw able to clear. A minute 15 gone on the man advantage, 2.20 remaining in the period. 0-0 the score, number one Ridgefield, number three New Canaan. It's the HAN Network's game of the week. It's a risky play there, back their own blue line, but McGeary able to handle. Now Forrest controlling as he lets a wrister go that just missed on the left side. Not by much. Stafford to Van Wees. Quick wrister deflected up and into the netting out of play. It will stay in the zone with 17 seconds left. And a better job on the penalty kill this time around, at least so far, Chris. And the thing is for New Canaan, they're more aggressive in the neutral zone. On this particular power play, they've pretty much kept Ridgefield at bay into these last few seconds. So you give New Canaan's penalty kill a lot of credit. This one up to the point, Forrest controlling. Working on the half boards, had it poked away by Glover momentarily, but a wrist shot coming and Windis able to hold on off the stick of Ty Fujitani. Cullinan was coming across the crease. Had he gotten there about a stride earlier, he would have deflected that in. And that we saw that on the first power play too. Chuma working off that back post and being able to get to the front of the net for the redirection. The Rams have got to be careful of a player sneaking from the back door to the front on these man advantages. But now it's Ridgefield who needs to be very cautious with the player coming out of the box. Adding's already had one breakaway. But Parcella does well to win the draw. And then check from behind as sent into the boards hard was Jack Webster. Call is going to be a cross check, it looks like, Frank. And you really could have got any any of the three calls right there. Cross check, boarding. You don't want to see a hit from behind. Uh, there's no room for it in the game whatsoever. If a player is... Anywhere away from the boards facing the opposite way, they're going to call it every time. They are. That That's like the, the blow to the head has become in football. They're going to call it if they see it. So the Rams' first full power play now with a minute 34 remaining. As adding can't hold the zone, and now Morris has got to win a race with Van Wees giving pressure. Swiveled his man into the ice, but good job by Van Wees to continue on the back check and take it away. 
And now New Canaan with an opportunity to gain the zone. Gamble goes all the way around the cage and sends over to Hill. Tyler Hill, the leading scorer for the Rams, relatively quiet at the start of this game with a minute remaining in the period now and New Canaan on the power play. About 25 seconds of this penalty will carry over unless New Canaan scores. So having to regain the zone one more time, it's Anton adding. Leaves for Brooks Gamble. Gamble on the right wing with time and space goes below the cage. Tyler Hill tried to find a cutting Morris, but it was canceled out in front. Good job there by Chuma. As a slapper from Adding coming in a kick save from Keegan's. He's good at that. He'll get the leg pad out. And that one deflected off the glove, went wide. As Gamble tried to go to the back door, but Hill just couldn't connect. Good look there and good rotation early on. With 49 seconds remaining on the man advantage and 24 in the period. A lot of blocked shots by both teams tonight, Chris. And you've seen a lot of you've seen a lot of New Canaan movement in front of the net. More guys are starting to go at adding. I'm sorry, starting to go at Keegan's to try to create any kind of deflection or just put something in point blank. And that one deflects out of play. Looked like it was off. But Richfield tighter that time. it was off time. Walker. I'm not certain, but I think it was off Walker. Kind of caught his arm and went up into the pads. Sorry, into the netting. Back to Morris. Across to Gamble, who lets the slapper go, but it's wide. Adding one of the one-timer, but he couldn't control it. Now 10 seconds on the clock. Sent to the front, and Keegan's will hold on. For another face-off to his right. And that may be what the Rams need if they're going to break through. Likewise, on the other side... That was the first puck we've seen get away from Keegan's. New Canaan didn't have anybody right there on the doorstep to take advantage. A little change to the Rams' power play there. We've seen them working from behind the net before that last possession. Now they go up top on the umbrella as Morris going to wind up and let the shot go. Redirected in front. Another save by Keegan's. They scrum for it, but the clock strikes zero, and the first period comes to an end. We stand where we started with the score tied at zero 25 seconds of power play remaining for the rams but before we get to that we go back to our shelton studios and kate chaplinski for an han in-game news update i'm kate chaplinski with your in-game news update on the han network bringing you the latest local news for tuesday february 7th New Canaan police saved the life of a heroin overdose victim on Monday. Police officers responded to a location in New Canaan on a report of an unconscious person. The officers arrived on the scene less than two minutes after being dispatched. Arriving officers quickly determined that the victim had recently used heroin. They administered Narcan and began other life-saving measures. The victim regained consciousness and treatment was taken over by the New Canaan Volunteer Ambulance Corps. The involved officers will be issued life-saving medical service awards. Police also said that special recognition goes to Silver Hill Hospital, which in 2014 helped the police department become one of the first in Fairfield County to provide all patrol officers with Narcan. And in other news, white supremacist flyers found in driveways and mailboxes Monday morning in the Cranberry area of Norwalk have caused alarm. Hearst, Connecticut Media reports that several hundred printed flyers enclosed in plastic sleeves and weighted down with gravel were tossed into driveways on Upper Newtown Avenue. The flyers read in part, we must secure the existence of our race and a future for white children. It went on to read, make America white again. It lists a website run by a man named Mike Enoch, who the Southern Poverty Law Center characterizes as an alt-right extremist. Norwalk police said that detectives are investigating that incident. And Trumbull police say a car thief swapped out stolen cars at a Trumbull home over the weekend. Police are investigating the theft of a vehicle and several thefts from vehicles that occurred in the early morning hours on Saturday in the area of Old Hollow Road. The suspect or suspects gained entry into unlocked cars, taking credit cards, cash and personal items. The stolen vehicle had the keys left inside and was taken from the victim's driveway. Another stolen vehicle taken from New Haven was left behind in its place. The credit cards were laid are used to purchase items at area businesses. The stolen Trumbull vehicle was later involved in a two-vehicle crash in Hamden. The suspects then fled the area. Anyone with information about those incidents is asked to contact Trumbull Police at 203-261-3665. 
And in Ridgefield, more cars have been reported stolen. One parked at a Lakeview Drive home and another at the Branchville train station. A Chevy Suburban was stolen from the train station on Saturday around 11 at night and was then found in the West Reading train station parking lot on Sunday. On Lakeview Drive, a resident reported that a Saab was stolen on Monday. Police Captain Jeff Kreitz said that the car was parked in the driveway of the home at the time. He added that in both incidents, keys were left in those cars at the time of the thefts. There have now been four cars stolen in Ridgefield in 2017, three from homes and one from that train station. And finally, a family of Syrian refugees were reunited in Milford over the weekend. Fadi Kazar and his family, separated more than two years and afraid that a U.S. travel ban might keep them apart longer, are reunited. And on Friday night, were met by at least 100 well-wishers who gathered at the Olive Tree in Milford to welcome them and show their support. U.S. Senators Richard Blumenthal and Chris Murphy were among the dignitaries on hand to greet the family. The little girls, ages 5 and 8, became two of the faces of the travel ban over the past week as politicians wrestled with President Donald Trump over the legality of the executive order banning travel from certain countries to the United States. But there's a lot more on that story at MilfordMirror.com. That does it for this in-game news update. For the latest local news, sports, and more, watch Coffee Break weekdays at 11. This update was brought to you by Miller Nissan. We told Dad he could have his office back if he sold 150 cars last month. Deal's a deal. Well, Dad, you did it. You get your office back. Forget it. I'm having too much fun down here. My new goal, 160 cars. <laughs> wow. Folks, if you ever wanted a great price on a new Nissan, now is the time. Right now, lease a 2017 Altima 2.5S for only $99 a month. Isn't it time you got Millerized? Have a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handyman CT. Milford Bank, we offer an extensive selection of lending products and services to meet virtually any need. Submit your application online in our Mortgage Web Center. Start to finish, you can apply for a loan in as little as 10 minutes. Our knowledgeable and helpful staff are available to meet with you at your convenience. To learn more about what we can do for you, stop by one of our Milford Bank offices or visit us at milfordbank.com. The Milford Bank, always there. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Discover a world of wellness in the heart of New Canaan. Halo Studios, New Canaan's first collaborative wellness center, offers you the freedom to choose from the best and latest health, fitness, and wellness options. Inside Halo Studios, you'll find all the wellness experts you need at places like Halo Fitness, Priority Wellness, and Sama Yoga Center. Come by for a free wellness assessment, open seven days a week at 45 Grove Street. For more information, visit halostudios.com or call 203-594-9909. Whether you're looking for the freshest seafood, the perfect steak, or want to share delicious appetizers, look no further than the Stone's Throw in Seymour. Chef Peter Hom has more than 30 years of experience creating original recipes in his American eclectic style. Our dishes are made from scratch with fresh local ingredients that pair perfectly with a seasonal craft beer, a signature cocktail, or your favorite wine. When you visit our Riverside location, you'll feel like you're on vacation when you're only a Stone's Throw from home. Visit us on Roosevelt Drive in Seymour or at stonesthrowct.com. We told Dad he could have his office back if he sold 150 cars last month. Deal's a deal. 
Well, Dad, you did it. You get your office back. Forget it. I'm having too much fun down here. My new goal, 160 cars. <laughs> wow. Folks, if you ever wanted a great price on a new Nissan, now is the time. Right now, lease a 2017 Altima 2.5S for only $99 a month. Isn't it time you got Millerized? Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. It's all about meeting goals this year, and Trinity CrossFit of Ridgefield has experienced trainers, top-of-the-line equipment, and a newly renovated space to help get you there. Offering more classes per day than any other CrossFit gyms in the area, we cater to all fitness levels. Our coaches have a combined 10 years of experience in CrossFit, and as competitors themselves, Trinity coaches can get you ready for competition in 2017. Visit our convenient location on Route 7, Danbury Road, or find out more at trinitycrossfit.com. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached more than 2 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Advertise on the HAN Network, where tens of thousands of viewers tune in each week to watch our news, sports, and entertainment programming. No other TV provider has what the HAN Network has for you. Advertise with us today and see the results. Contact Jessica Murin at jessica at han.network. As we are back from the Darien Ice House, Frank Renito, John Kovach, and Chris Kalen. 0-0 zero, zero between New Ridgefield and New Canaan after the first period, and I thought it was one of the best periods of hockey we have seen all year. I enjoyed it. Good pace. Physical play, which I enjoy. Uh, there were chances. Goalies coming up big. Special teams coming up big. Uh, entertaining game, and I'm really looking forward to these next two periods. And, Chris, I thought it was a little more physical than we would have seen, especially from New Canaan. But again, uh, the emotion of this game, and I think the, what's at stake right now is really on display. I think New Canaan came out, and I think they wanted to show early on that they were not intimidated by Ridgefield. They were not going to be pushed around. I think they wanted to come out and set a tone, and they really did. I, th I thought they did a very good job setting that tone. They did outshoot Ridgefield 10-8 to in that period. And remember, when we first asked the shots, it was Ridgefield was 6 New Canaan four, so a little bit of a turn in the trend there. Windus made some big saves. Keegan's made some big saves. Both team with a shot off the crossbar. About as balanced a period as you could have seen. Chris, what adjustments do you think we'll see from both sides coming out of the locker room now? I think what you're going to have to see is both sides are going to have to dial down the hitting and concentrate more on setting up their offense and then working their selections moving, cycling, doing everything that they've normally that they've done to get to this point. I think it, in the second period, it can't be about a grudge match because if it's about an up and down, hard hitting physical match, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be burned out for the third period. And it's just gonna be like the ice capades skating around because no one's gonna have any energy left. Chris, I know where I come down on this, but I'm curious where you two come down on this. Are, do you need to be more or less selective with your shots in this second period? Less selective. I think it's more get the puck to the net and try to force the goalie to make a play, whether it's on that initial shot or on the rebound. Uh, I agree, and I was going to say, I thought we saw flashes of the speed in that period. You had the breakaway from adding Van Wees coming down the left wing boards at one point in time. So there were, sp there were spots where you saw that finesse game. I think the coaches want to see more of that on display. And to get a better idea of whether or not we'll see that kind of adjustment, we go down inside the glass with Chris Kalen. 
Thanks, guys. I'm coach with Ridgefield Tigers coach uh, Sean Gallagher. Coach, what did you guys do well in the first period? I think both teams played well. Both teams skated well. Um, you know, I think for uh, two good high school hockey teams, you couldn't ask for a better period back and forth. Chances on both, crossbars on both. So, uh, you know, I think all in all, not just us, but New Canaan played well. How do you feel your team handled the physical aggressiveness of Richfield? Yeah, they came off flying, but we got some big, strong kids too. So that's what I can. I think it makes an even matchup, you know, as far as physical physicality goes. Yeah, you know, one of the things we had talked about is you know, kind of you know, things you have to do after a tough, you know, way both goalies played in that first period. What kind of adjustments do you have to make offensively to put the puck in the net? Just a little more crisp, you know. Some of our passes is a little bit off, a little bit, you know, bobbled here and there. I think if we get a little more crisp, we'll be okay. All right, coach. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Coach. And I thought that was a good way to put it, crisp. Uh, you want to see a cleaner controlling of the puck and attempt to get towards the net. New Canaan, as we start the second period with 20 seconds left on the man advantage, as Harrison Chuma shakes the first man behind the net, but good help from Anton Adding. Allows the Rams to maintain the zone. Quick shot for Morris in the rebound. Stick to side, and it's right back to Morris. Tyler Hill in position for a one-timer. He wasn't ready for it. A fancy move there from Hills. He tries to chip one on the short side, but the puck stays with him. Keegan's lost his stick momentarily, still has him regained. Parcella out of the box, and adding intercepts that play as he tried to find Van Wees. Stretch pass across, and here's Gambles with it, but he instead overskated it. As Keegan's will cover now and let the lines reset as the man advantage has ended. Smart cover. He had a lot of chaos there. Keegan's lost his stick. It was across the crease. Took him a while to get down there. Not that it was in a spot where it was going to hurt him. And we got a special shout out here to Barry McMahon. Happy 60th birthday, Barry, from your nephew, George. Very excited to have you tuning in tonight. So happy birthday. Barry McMahon, 60th birthday. Happy birthday, Barry. So Tigers back the other way. A minute gone in the second period as Forrest lets that shot go by. Behind the net, tried to send one out in front. It bobbles around for a moment, and you can see the fresh ice playing very slick here out of that first intermission. Forrest on the boards. Back towards the point, and it's points away, and now a race for the puck. Keegan's looking for an ice, and it got waved off. Granito and Fujitani battling behind. McMahon shoves his man off it. Now it's adding with it. Plenty of time, correction, that's Gelnaw. Back across, Teddy Hood. Fanned on the first time, and now McMahon behind the net. I don't know if that was a fan or a fake to draw it in and throw it past him, Frank. Poked around out in front, and Granito comes up with it before starting the cycle again. Jonas Chang goes all the way back. McMahon with it, but a penalty coming here as Gelnaw is going to be the one sent to the box. Another of those from behind. They call it a roughing, and, and it's again that hit from behind that Ridgefield got hit for last period there it is again and they're going to call that it's and a safety issue and it's a tough break for the rams who had gotten a little momentum and had the cycle working a good shift from gelma mcmahon and granito but now the rams quickly back to the pk as we start the second period chris and guys the, the official called it a hit to the head on gelma and i think i think a warning's been issued for that but i i couldn't tell i couldn't hear the official clearly and that very well may be because the hit was to the head. So, Working down the right wing. Here's Brooks Gamble. He's against Mateo Van Wees. Was held up, set back down. And they're going to call that one. And that's 26 seconds will represent the duration of this Richfield Tigers power play. Now we're 4-on-4 four four again. These teams have to keep their heads. They cannot afford to be a man down. This was where we saw a lot of big opportunities from both sides. A lot of open ice to work with now, Chris. Yeah, it's uh, it, Van Wees is going to go for two minutes for holding. And he just got Gamble into that arm ball, pulled him back down. It's an easy call as Jonas Chang steps through with pickup possession. Trying to work around Quinn Hayes, beat his man to the outside, and a quick backhand had to be fought off by Windus. Honestly, I enjoyed when these teams were four aside with all the open ice with some really great hockey. Stepping over that one was Cullinan. Forrest sent it all the way around. 
Now Anton Adding picks up behind his own net. Up the boards, there's George McMahon. Back check from Forrest. And Quinn Hayes now sends up ahead. McMahon gains the zone. He's got Morris on the back door. This one slides through the rebound, and two saves had to be made from Keegan's. That was close. Chipped in from the neutral zone, and all the way back for that one is Fujitani. Looking up ice, and he connects with, that was Matt Walker. Walker back to Fujitani, and it's played behind the end line. Cullinan controls. He's got an opportunity on the backhand, but the wraparound stopped by Windis and held on to. With 24 seconds remaining before an, a shortened Rams power play. 11.35 remaining in the second. It is 0-0. You're watching the HAN Network's Game of the Week. Frank Renito, John Kovach, and Chris Kalen here for this one. As Tyler Hill's first shot canceled. Here's Granito with it now. Circling behind the net and reverses the opposite way. Stafford back for McGeary. I think he expected somebody to be in the corner on the receiving end of that pass. Nobody there. And I don't think this is a wise icing by Richfield. I think somebody forgot it was four on four. I think McGeary was looking for Signorelli, but the pass sailed on him a little bit. That could have been it, too. So now four seconds remaining. Duquesne will be a man up for 25 seconds after those four seconds. We see Quinn McMahon for the first time tonight. Joins Brooks Gamble and the Webster brothers on the point. Ben wears number five and Jack wears 16. As McGeary sends up ahead, it was knocked down and collected. He's letting that shot go wide was Landon Byers. Now the Rams with 15 seconds on the man advantage. Gambles delivers a check. And this one will be sent the length of the ice and that should do it for the New Canaan power play. Heavy pressure coming from Byers as he cancels out. Behind the play, a couple of Rams battling there, and it looks like we might see coincidental penalties now. As the extracurriculars continue. We'll see a lot more of that Friday and Saturday. We, we bring you the FCAC Wrestling Championship <laughs> from New Canaan High School. Preview show will be Friday, and then we'll bring you the uh, finals on Saturday. Looking forward to that. We have got the trials for you Friday afternoon. Interviews with many of the captains and coaches that day, and of course then the championships and wrestlebacks on Saturday. All that coming to you from New Canaan High School. 4.30 to 6.30 we're on the air Friday. I believe it is 2.30 to 4.30 on Saturday. And it, it's a great sport to watch and you're going to learn a lot about the sport when you watch it. We'll have our own Bill Bloxham on the call. And Bill essentially a professor of wrestling. I. I love the sport, I follow the sport, and every time I watch it with Bill, I really enjoy it. We'll also have for you basketball on Thursday night, New Canaan and Darien. But yeah, 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 sure you will. With that game in question, <laughs> let's go down to something that's certain, and that's Chris Kalen in the penalty box with the calls. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be offsetting roughing penalties. Brooks Gamble is going to serve two minutes plus for New Canaan. And it's going to be Landon Byers serving the two minutes plus for Ridgefield. Is this a timeout, Chris, or just a stop? No. No, it's not a timeout. What happened was I think Pat Gore wanted an explanation as to what happened. And the official came over to talk to him. Thank you. So five on five, they'll skate now. That's what happens when you're locked in doing a plug for a show that's on Friday and Saturday. As here's Grisset working down the right wing. Canceled off there as Hart comes to help behind the net, but taking that one was Liam Galloway. Galloway sends all the way around the cage and waiting for this one. Momentarily was Charlie Luft, but it was taken away by Walker. Glover tried to center in front, but Hart couldn't control, and now Walker out the opposite way. Walker looking towards the slot, but that one slid through the crease and wide with 10 minutes remaining in the second period. Patience here from Drew Morris as he tries to send the flip pass through the neutral zone. A good job by Galloway stepping up and playing that with his hand. And Nukanen does that a lot, that high pass through the neutral zone to set up the breakaway. 
Ridgefield has a lot of size. It's going to be a lot tougher tonight. Opportunity here. Forrest tried to slide one through the slot. Then a follow-up wrister was blocked down in front. Here's McMahon with it. Far side and Grisset couldn't control it. And neither can adding as this one played across. With patience from Granito to make sure he stayed in check and they didn't take a bench minor. Poke towards the slot, McMahon with it. Fan the first wrister, second one missed. Adding shot, deflected and up into the top of the glass. That was two one-timers with a perfect angle and a little bit of open net to deal with. Here's Forrest working through the neutral zone. Ran into by Ben Webster, and now slowing things down to the Richfield Tigers as they regroup at their own blue line. Chuma with it, soft dump to the opposite corner. And it's turned over in front, but Teddy Hood did well playing it to safety. Bernito's pass didn't go through the first time, but here's McMahon on the follow-up. Trying to skate through a check, but it was lost. As once again, the Rams a little too close for comfort with that change. We might be seeing a penalty, John. I think it's going to be a bench minor. That, like you talked about earlier. Uh, and up to, from girls basketball, Wilton and Trumbull are headed into overtime. So an interesting game there. Trumbull, the only remaining undefeated team in the state of Connecticut. Let's go down inside the glass with Chris Kalen. Yeah, and Harry Gelnaw, he's going to serve the two minutes for the too many, men, too many men on the ice penalty. And you can see the frustration on Coach Gore right now. And they got away with it one time, Chris. There was no chance they were getting away with it the second time. Well, the thing was, the officials came over. They actually warned Ridgefield's bench about it, too, and said, when you make the change, you need to hurry up, and your guys need to hurry up and get off the ice. They did. They told Sean Gallagher that. They went over and they told Pat Gore that, and I think just uh, somebody got caught out of place. And really what the killer is, John, is that while you're making that change, one of the Rams played the puck. And it, that's it. That's when that gets called. As a shot and a score! On the right wing, and it was tipped in front. Now they're going to wave it off with a kicking motion. And the debate going on with the official. But suddenly you've got an eruption from the New Canaan student section after the celebration by Richfield. They're shocked now at this call. Yeah, it was, it's a kick, so they're going to wave the penalty off. And that came in almost automatically right off the bat, so the officials are right on top of it. We're going to take another look at this. Oh. So we see it again, and uh, yeah, we are tough to tell, but you see the official right there coming in right away. He was all over that one, no goal. So 8-13-134, we remain scoreless. And the call was immediate, no delay there. We're gonna try it one more time here. Slow motion, up, cross ice pass. Yeah, we're really, our replay's not conclusive. So we remain scoreless now, is on the right wing boards, it's Parcella. Quick wrister there, deflected off the stick of Morris and back out of play. And Chris, the Rams dodging a ball at that time, but the fourth power play now for the Richfield Tigers, uh, just a game after we saw the Rams take seven penalties. But if you're New Canaan, you know, for, for this penalty kill, you have to be concerned because New Canaan was able to move the puck and set up a deflective shot in front of the net. We saw that on the first power play of the game. It was when they had their most success with Chuma at the front of the net. But a good job from George McMahon, who clears the length of the ice as Keegan... Sets this one up for Van Wees. He sent one off the crossbar back in the first period. He's been held in check since. As he loses this one on the half boards. It's cleared one more time. Stretch pass from Keegans finds Parcella at the far blue line. And Chuma did well to stay on side. His wrister fought off the mask from Windis. I think Chuma got held a little bit. And I think the Duquesne player helped keep him on side. Canaan out of place on that one with Keegan sending that pass from his own net to the far blue line. But a good job from Drew Morris. 
who stops play and sends it all the way down. And Weiss from behind his own net. Forced back behind the cage by Gamble. Good forechecking. Sorry, Frank. 15 seconds remaining. Van Weiss with it. Let's a wrister go and another save from Windis. Second effort to the far corner. Coming up with that one was Ty Fujitani. And sent up off the glass and into the Ridgefield bench with three seconds remaining on the power play and 642 to go in the period. And that's something, John, as you alluded to, a good forecheck. We've seen the Rams ultra aggressive throughout this season when on the penalty kill and on the forecheck. Yes, they're very aggressive on that. They buy themselves time, but you have to worry when you do that and you take as many penalties, penalties as they do. Seven the other day against Darien, four so far tonight, and we're just past the halfway point. You can't wear down your penalty kill unit. And we are all even as Windus has to make a save off a shot from the neutral zone from Fujitani. 6.20 remaining. Chip to the far side where it finds Gelnaw. Fresh out of the box serving that bench minor. His shot canceled out. Controlling now is Webster. Up to the point and Hill tried to find Gamble cutting towards the front. But they missed connecting on that one. Good look from Tyler Hill on that play. And Stafford lets one go. And Windus will swallow this up and freeze play with six minutes remaining. Gamble just had to get a stick on that one, and he had net to work with. And Chris, that same pace of play we saw in the first, carrying over now. These teams continue trying to find that first goal. And Ridgefield, through no effort, is making Windus really work. They've got seven shots on goal so far in this period. Windus having to make six saves. Battle along the half wall and coming away with it is Ryan Hart. He's got Grisset on the far side and able to connect there. Tried the curl and drag, but it was checked away. Good job by Andrew Tregertha, denying the opportunity to the middle. Guys for New Canaan, they have to keep they have to stay out of the penalty box. They really they have to be aggressive, but they have to be smart. You really need a lot of five on five play because if you keep giving Ridgefield opportunities, they're going to put the puck in the net. And they have not been able to sustain any kind of pressure or get anything going, Chris, with the penalties now. So we'll see what they do with that second line of adding McMahon and Granito out on the ice. Battling behind the net, adding comes away with it. Hesitates for a moment, but Byers wedged him off that one. Nito chases Chuma behind the net, who skates through that check, and able to clear the zone. Morris sending one up and off the glass behind the top of the cage. Right out in front, is adding with it now. Circles around, and the Rams go to the cycle. Up top, here's Morris. Now adding, looking towards the front of the cage, and went wide through the crease. There's a few times here where the Rams are just out of sync a little bit on the passes that a little bit of wood would have redirected a, a puck toward the Richfield net. Here's adding with it, had to hesitate as Granito tagged up. And the Rams will go to change. A good shift there though, Chris, from that second line. A little bit of sustained pressure. Great puck movement, great puck work. It was just an unfortunate bounce off the corner that allowed that puck get out into the neutral zone and, and the Rams really couldn't handle it on the throwback. Taken away here, Lombardi with it. He winds up for the wrister and scores! That was Joe Signorelli. He went to the short side and buried it right under the crossbar. A little bit of confusion, a little crowding around the puck by the Rams. Lombardi, he comes away with it, goes right over top of Windus' left shoulder. And here it is again, he comes out of the pile Skates toward, and there he goes. So it's Signorelli unassisted, and it's the Rams' two opportunities to clear the zone, John. They can't get it out, and it's a turnover by New Canaan now that leads to scoring compared to what we saw on Saturday, Chris. And you know what? For the most part, it's like John said. A lot of the passes are just a little off, and it was a good scoring opportunity out front with a good time deflection, but unfortunately it looked like, uh, it kind of it looked like Webster got caught on a, almost tripped 
or tried to avoid somebody and got airborne. That's what couldn't help with the deflection. Well, you had a pile there, and Lombardozzi comes out. I'm sorry, Signorelli comes out of the pile with the puck, and there's nobody to get between him and the net, Signorelli. So 3.40 remaining now. The Tigers strike first, and they lead 1-0 as this one goes through Hill Skates. And right back on the attack is Ridgefield. Shot towards Windus, and he made that save. Opportunity now as McMahon grabs this one out of the air. He's in on the breakaway to the forehand, and a big save as Keegan stopped it between the pads. Keegan's just standing his ground and taking that. Webster towards the front of the net. It was cut off in the slot. Tyler Hill with it now. Curl and drag, got a man on the back door, but he just missed Gelnoff. Opportunity from Pickering, and that one canceled out. Rams trying to respond. McMahon circles all the way around from the corner, but it is taken away as Stafford looks up ice. And that's gonna be a leg check there as Ben Webster stepped up, but Stafford not denying this play, and his shot went wide. Keegan's has vacated the net. Tigers controlling in the corner, and the whistle blown, and Ukanen now will go back down a man as Ben Webster just caught out of position and this will be a leg check and, and this is not what New Canaan needs they just gave up a goal and now they're back on the kill within what two minutes three minutes of the last uh, penalty three minutes time since that last penalty just a minute elapsed since the Tigers scored The good thing about New Canaan's penalty kill is they've been able to draw penalties to get things four on four. It's happened a couple of times tonight for New Canaan. Maybe they can do it again, just try to work hard and try to get Ridgefield to make a mistake. The one thing they certainly have to be cautious of, Chris, is the man in front of the net and Chuma and that first power play unit are back on. He's had the most success screening with deflections in front of Windus. Here's Van Wees up top. And towards the front of the cage, it's lost in some skates momentarily, but then sent outside. And a shot from Windus held onto as Chuma crashes in hard. One thing Richfield can't do is take a penalty now that they're a man up and cancel it out. A shot from McGeary. And John, in order to do that, New Canaan's going to have to get, get the puck moving. They've been able to draw the penalties in back of the net. That's where they need to get the puck and start moving around. Here is Chuma, now McGeary, joined by Van Wees, Byers, and Parcella. Up top to Van Wees, over for Byers. As the umbrella sets up. Several players in front of the net as Van Wees just walks the line back and forth, playing catch with teammates. Over for Parcella, quick shot there, but a sliding man blocked that one down. Correction, that was Drew Morris, and then it sent the length of the ice and some pushing and shoving continues in front of the Tigers bench. I think that would have been a headman pass, got caught in a pile of snow just outside the door to the Ridgefield bench. And Weiss and McGeary playing catch again. Quick shot there, deflected over to the right side. As Byers was already crashing towards the front of the goal mouth. There's a lot of traffic for that puck to get through as well. Parcella had ability to walk all the way to the front of the net, but his shot denied by Windus. Top Van Wees, shot through traffic, at the flex wide. Second effort, third effort on the back door, and now it's in the front of the cage. Tyler Hill with it, one on one against the forward Van Wees. Let's see what the senior can do. Quick wrister, and Keegan's able to hold on as that one swallowed up in his belly. Good defense by Van Wees, good shot by Hill, who kind of specializes at that breakaway. Keegan stops it from going five hole, but I think he wasn't sure for a second if he did because he turned his head and looked around a little bit. And Chris, I'm surprised to see the Rams trying to shoot low right now. Uh, it's a strong butterfly goalie in Keegan's and you had him beat early on with that shot over the shoulder. I agree, but I think what happened was he tried to use his, uh, the defender as a screen. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a good move to go around him and go to five hole and kind of forced Keegan to guess on where that puck was going to go. And I honestly think he just got lucky on it because it got the puck got elevated just a little bit to go right in the gut. 
Stepping through is Fujitani as he took that one momentarily. But Hill right back out as he takes it away. But the round. Chang that time and it's up to the point. Shot down low and it's off the side of the net. Teddy Hood comes up to play and joins it. We're all even for the Rams. Keegan's lost his stick again. He hasn't gotten it back. He's down on his knees. He's finally reclaimed it. Stepping in now is Kennedy scores! Cullen in with the twisted wrister over the glove. And with 35 seconds remaining, it's a 2-0 Tigers lead. Went up above the left shoulder again. Knocked the Gatorade bottle off of the top of the net. And that one. You can't spend the whole night on a penalty kill, Frank. It's going to sting the Rams. It comes even strength, but just off the power play were the Tigers as they've now got a two-goal lead. Marcelo lets a wrister go, and that one wide. Right, it had just, it had just gone back to even strength. And what's even worse about it, it's in that final minute of play. As Van Wee sends this one down behind the end line. Morris all the way around and waiting at the blue line was McMahon. With five seconds to play, Renito has it and just chips up through the neutral zone as Adding will not be able to get a shot off here. The Tigers strike twice in the final four minutes as they take a 2-0 lead into the second intermission. We'll step aside and be back shortly with more analysis in this one as number one Richfield is 15 minutes away from continuing on the unbeaten path. We'll have more high school hockey in our HAN Game of the Week right after this. a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care, Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Recently renovated and home to one of Connecticut's largest indoor turf fields, InSports is a multi-sport recreation center providing state-of-the-art facilities for league play, camps, and youth programs. Sign your child up now for InSports Future Stars Basketball Academy, teaching skills on the basketball court for boys and girls ages 5 through 9. Visit InSportsCenters.com for more information on this seven-week program. And for adults, Spots are also still available for our men's 30 and over and 40 and over leagues. Like and follow us on Facebook. Are you ready for winter? Ski and Sport has everything you need to be fully outfitted for the season. A family owned and operated business with over 40 years of experience, Ski and Sport's three convenient locations in Fairfield County offer top quality, high fashion ski and winter wear. In addition to clothing for men, women, and children, we also offer seasonal rentals for the entire family. Stop by our stores on 1 Ethan Allen Highway in Richfield, 877 Post Road East in Westport, and at 110 Main Street in New Canaan, or visit us at skiandsport.net. Get a fresh start to the new year by shaking up your meal routine. Walter Stewart's Market is your local source for a delicious selection of fresh and convenient salad shakers. Like Southwest Salad with Chicken, Cobb with Organic Chicken, Power Vegan with Fruit and Quinoa, Greek Salad with Tabbouleh, and Grilled Shrimp with Hominy. Grab one from our salad case or order from our deli today. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com.
Want a new experience in car buying? Skip Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram with one of the largest inventories of new two- and four-door Wranglers. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Come visit our new Ram Truck Center. Browse our websites, scapchryslerjeep.com or scapdodge.net to find the new Jeep, Chrysler Dodge car, minivan, or Ram truck you've been looking for. Just two miles from both I-95 or the Merritt Parkway exit 44. Save thousands at the President's Day event and Ram Truck Month, now through February 28th. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. MrHandymanCT.com At the Milford Bank, we offer an extensive selection of lending products and services to meet virtually any need. Submit your application online in our Mortgage Web Center. Start to finish, you can apply for a loan in as little as 10 minutes. Our knowledgeable and helpful staff are available to meet with you at your convenience. To learn more about what we can do for you, stop by one of our Milford Bank offices or visit us at milfordbank.com. The Milford Bank, always there. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Discover a world of wellness in the heart of New Canaan. Halo Studios, New Canaan's first collaborative wellness center, offers you the freedom to choose from the best and latest health, fitness, and wellness options. Inside Halo Studios, you'll find all the wellness experts you need at places like Halo Fitness, Priority Wellness, and Sama Yoga Center. Come by for a free wellness assessment, open seven days a week at 45 Grove Street. For more information, visit halostudios.com or call 203-594-9909. Whether you're looking for the freshest seafood, the perfect steak, or want to share delicious appetizers, look no further than the Stone's Throw in Seymour. Chef Peter Hom has more than 30 years of experience creating original recipes in his American eclectic style. Our dishes are made from scratch with fresh local ingredients that pair perfectly with a seasonal craft beer, a signature cocktail, or your favorite wine. When you visit our Riverside location, you'll feel like you're on vacation when you're only a Stone's Throw from home. Visit us on Roosevelt Drive in Seymour or at stonesthrowct.com. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. It's all about meeting goals this year, and Trinity CrossFit of Ridgefield has experienced trainers, top-of-the-line equipment, and a newly renovated space to help get you there. Offering more classes per day than any other CrossFit gyms in the area, we cater to all fitness levels. Our coaches have a combined 10 years of experience in CrossFit, and as competitors themselves, Trinity coaches can get you ready for competition in 2017. Visit our convenient location on Route 7, Danbury Road, or find out more at trinitycrossfit.com. I'm Frank Granito. And I'm Donald Ng for the HAN Network. Tune in to Nutmeg Sports Monday through Thursday, where we bring you all the top stories from Connecticut sports. From highlights to player interviews and expert analysis, no one gets you closer to Connecticut's games than Nutmeg Sports. Nutmeg Sports, now Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. on the HAN Network. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached more than 2 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 
888-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Back from the Darien Ice House on the HAN Network, the Ridgefield Tigers with a 2-0 lead after two periods in our HAN Network Game of the Week. And we go down now ice side with Chris Kalen to tell you a little bit more about that second period and what we saw. And a lot of what you saw was Ridgefield take control of the game. They uh, Both teams do have 19 shots apiece, but Ridgefield came back strong and really just took control of the game. You saw it in the last few minutes with the scoring. Uh, Sean Keegan's been outstanding. He has 19 saves on the day. Peter Windis has isn't too shabby. He's come away with 16 saves. But at the end of the day, going into this third period, New Canaan's got a 2-0 lead that they have to overcome. And Chris, I thought you said it best in the second period when you just talked about the Rams not being able to get any kind of rhythm because they're taking penalties again. And what's going on is it just says it all because when you start to get into a flow, you take a penalty. Now, you're, now you've now you got to drop back and now you have to play defense. You can't get any offensive rush going. Yeah, this is a team that can score on a penalty kill. They can get shorthanded goals, but against a team like Ridgefield, it's not all that easy. This is a team that's got speed. They can drop back and defend with the best of them. And for New Canaan, what they have to do is what they've done on the penalty kill is draw penalties, but they have to draw even strength penalties to put themselves on the power play. And as I recall, guys, it was penalties that hurt the Rams the last time these two met in the non-conference game up at the Winter Garden in Richfield. Uh, it'll be an interesting final 15 minutes. We're going to take one more break quickly here. When we get back, we'll have the third period of action for you coming up next on the HAN Network. Get a fresh start to the new year by shaking up your meal routine. Walter Stewart's Market is your local source for a delicious selection of fresh and convenient salad shakers. Like Southwest Salad with Chicken, Cobb with Organic Chicken, Power Vegan with Fruit and Quinoa, Greek Salad with Tabbouleh, and Grilled Shrimp with Hominy. Grab one from our salad case or order from our deli today. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the Nutmeg State? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 12.30 to find out. We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAN's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. I am Denise Figuagoli, host of The Drive, here every Tuesday on the HN Network. It's about how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates the life you live with people, places, ideas, and organizations that move us forward mindfully and consciously. Tune into The Drive here on the HN Network, Tuesdays at 1230. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure with me, Steve Coulter, and our Arts and Leisure editor, Sally Sanders, Mondays at 1230, right here on the HAN Network. I'm John Kovach. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter, and I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune into Yankee Fisherman, Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. Many thanks to our advertising partners. They enjoy an audience of tens of thousands each week on the HAN Network. Become part of our team by contacting advertising director Jessica Murin at jessica at HAN. Dot network. Frank Granito, John Kovach, and Chris Kalin back with you at the Darien Ice House on our HAN Network Game of the Week. Number one team in the state, the Ridgefield Tigers, for the game time CT poll with a 2 0 lead over the New Canaan Rams, who sit at number three. 
Both these teams, the final remaining unbeaten teams in the conference as you get a look at a quiet Bussies Bomb Squad who was silenced in the final four minutes of that last period with two Tigers goals. And that second goal is so crucial right now. A goal in the final minute, it's a momentum grabber. It's one that can just suck the wind out of your sails. Buchanan's got to make up a goal early to get mentally back in this. Ridgefield 15 minutes away from putting themselves in the driver's seat of the FCAC Conference. As we see a little change up in the lines here from Coach Gore, he bumps up adding alongside Gamel and Hill as Brooks Gamble with a good look in the slot there. But just fan on that shot. But here's adding with it now. Low wrister to the far side. Keegan's had to make a save. And we've got an early penalty coming up. It's going to go against Ridgefield. Rams have to take advantage of this. Couple of good chances there. That first one, Gamble, I think the puck must have bounced or rolled. And he just never got good wood on it. We saw that at the start of the second period too, a real slick ice surface. Tough to control that puck early on, but Chris, a good 30 seconds to start the period for the Rams, but as John said, they've got to capitalize right now. Yeah, you've got to make this two minutes work for you. Jeffrey Priscilla is going to go out for two minutes for tripping, and for New Canaan, you have to take advantage. Here's Gamble with it on the right wing, behind the net for Tyler Hill, and he's back to Gamble. Hesitates, throws some sauce, and he finds Hill below the end line, adding. Hill, Rams controlling and it finds Morris up top. Good patience now as 25 seconds gone by, adding shot towards the top right corner. Missed over the net and Hill receives behind the red line. Touch pass from McMahon missed and heads roll on the New Canaan bench as Coach Gore is in disbelief. Just a bad giveaway that allows Ridgefield to clear. Up ahead here's Brooks Gamble with it. Anton adding. He plays give and go now with Drew Morris. Sent to the middle. Four seniors and a junior on the ice for the Rams. Up top, Morris over to Gamble. Reading that one all the way though. And a good play defensively that time by Fujitani. Under 50 seconds remaining in the man advantage. Sent to the slot, McMahon couldn't handle it. But adding's there to retrieve. Morris up top, now Gamble with it, lets the one-timer go, and a sliding Fujitani block that one. Gamble's stick might have broken as he heads to the bench. Replaced and guys, by Gelnaw. And guys, you can hear Pat Gore clearly yelling. He, he's not happy with the way the penalty, the, pow, the, penalty, the power play is going, because he's screaming at guys, move and cut, get to the net. And they're not, they're kind of holding their position and trying these long shots, and they're not getting good wood on it. Renito leaves for Ben Webster, working to the middle of the ice as he walks the line. Let's a wrister go, and Keegan sticks that one to the corner. Delnaw below the end line, couldn't quite control that one. A good job by Granito coming to help out. Connor Granito, one of our Athlete of the Week nominees. Make sure you get online. And Bonus Granito finds the back of the net. It's a power play goal, and the Rams are on the board. Bridgefield had just about killed that. There's a rebound off the pads, and it's lifted up over the left shoulder of Keegan's as he's down in the butterfly. Great first save, but as we said in the pregame, rebound control is going to be crucial. First, one of the few times we've seen him struggle with the control of rebound, it costs Ridgefield early on. Guys, the scoring on that is Chase Glover from Quinn Hayes. Lover credited with the goal and Hayes the assist. As the Rams back in and we get a look at the replay here. There's that shot down low and tough to tell. It might have been Granito on that one. We'll come back to it after. But with three minutes going by, the Rams back in this one trailing two to one. Back the other way, Hill with an opportunity as his shot was blocked down by a sliding Will Forrest. Up to the point. All the way back behind the cage. And McMahon joins the play as we've seen a couple of short shifts coming here from Brooks Gamble. 
Big check that time delivered along the boards. Pumped in from the red line and the Tigers will work the full 200 feet now. Hunting putt out to the opposite blue line. They caught Ridgefield on a change. They've got a break here. Granito with a clapper and that one off the crossbar as he was feeling it from just inside the blue line. That one came in a little hot, Frank. He wound up from about two feet outside, stepped into one. The little guy just missing on the left side. But really almost four minutes here and it's been all New Canaan. This is the start they had to hope for in the locker room after they went down 2 nothing late in the second. Uh, we have learned now as here's Glover with it. Glover far side, Grisset and Keegan sliding across. Had to make another save. Great effort by Keegan sliding across to block that. Four minutes gone by. It has been all new Canaan to start the third. As Keegan will hold on and we'll see a face off to his left. For scoring purposes, John, as we get a little pushing and shoving down there, doesn't appear to be anything. It's a lot of jawing going on right now. For scoring purposes, that last goal from the Rams was just after the penalty expired, so it is an even strength goal. So there's 10.45 remaining. Gamble couldn't control that one in the slot. Stretch pass the other way as tapping that one along was Barcella. Pressuring Morris and coming to help that time was Adam. Hills pass knocked down by Byers. And here's Chuma with it. First we've seen Ridgefield press this period. Van Wies' shot deflected around and slid to the left of the cage through the crease. Chuma almost there to get a puck on that and he had a, a little bit of an alley to tip that in. Quinn Hayes sent one wide of the net. Passing around, good check there in the neutral zone as Van Weiss went down. Five minutes gone by. Up ahead as Van Weiss can't control. Teddy Hood plays it up for Gelnaw. Gelnaw, Granito, and Quinn McMahon now aligned together for the Rams. And here is Quinn McMahon with it. Trying to sidestep around one man. is back behind the play. Gelnaw slow to get up. Nice job by Will Forrest poking that away. A sure break up the boards. Renito behind the net. Turnaround shot and that one wide off the outside. Had McMahon in front. And he might have been covered as Ridgefield will choose to send this one the length of the ice for an icing. 5.36 gone by and let's go down inside the glass with Chris Kalen as it has been all New Canaan to start this period. Guys, New Canaan's come out high flying. They're putting the pressure on Ridgefield. Ridgefield's struggling to clear the puck. They're struggling to get out. They're struggling. They're just struggling to break out to get on offense. And it's been that way the first five and a half minutes. And that one off the draw sent up and out of play. Face off again coming to Keegan's left. And I'm really surprised that Ridgefield didn't seize momentum with that goal in the final minute of the second period and come out flying. But you've backed New Canaan against the wall. They had no choice but come out like this. It is McMahon alongside Grisset and Glover. As Coach Gore has shuffled the lines all around now. Jack Webster behind his own net, collects along the left side and he'll work up ice. Through the neutral zone, it comes back. And here's Shane Pickering with plenty of time and space. Down Grisset momentarily, but it was turned over. And waiting behind the cage now is Webster for the breakout attempt again. Marcella knocked that one down out of the air, and Van Wies collects. Van Wies quick wrister, and Windus fights that one off. Great shot by Van Wies. He's got such a quick and lethal snapshot. Cannot give him time and space to get it off in the slot. So it's up to the point and Schumann's shot goes to a corner. 8.15 remaining, two to one. Rams scoring here in the third as this one up ahead. Gamble with an opportunity for a breakaway if he can get a stride. A good hustle back as Chuma and McGeary deny the opportunity. Great defense, just beat him to the point. 
A little bit of a car wreck there in neutral ice. As Hill came in, took out Gamel and Schumer together. Big save there by Windus. 7.45 remaining, Then We saw that one taken away in what has been a very long shift for the senior. Up ahead, deflected down, negating the icing. And we're already midway through this last period, Frank. Very few whistles to start this period as a stretch pass to the far side. Tyler Hill sends a bouncer towards Keegan that he fields with the glove and will hold on to. So we'll see an offensive zone faceoff coming to the left of Sean Keegan's. 7.21 remaining. I don't think we've seen the last of these two teams on the ice against each other, Frank. At least two more tournaments where they will be foes that expect to cross paths. Of course, it is championship month on the HAN network. We've got plenty more coming up. As Granito sends one up off the boards, McMahon muscled off the puck there. Trey Gertha denied an opportunity. Sticked around, turned over a couple of times as they play ping pong back and forth between the blue lines. Richfield, almost like a tennis player coming to the net, has moved up, and they're basically cutting off New Canaan at their blue line now. All the way back in the mutual zone is Joe Signorelli. He scored the game's first goal. Now Will Forrest with it. Good stick from Jack Webster. He keeps him to the outside. Pass from Cullinan made its way to the neutral zone as the Tigers will change and regroup. Ben Webster with it. And that one denied and now it's Matt Walker behind the cage. Because Charlie loved to turn the play there getting a stick on what would have been a clearing pass. Walker down low. Ben Webster comes away with it. Looking up and he finds George McMahon. Ben's brother Jack came through to help out and he dumps this one in up off the glass all the way down. Rams on a change behind the play. 540 remaining. And this one sent all the way down. It will be an icing against Ridgefield. Probably the best shift of the period we saw there, Chris, as the Tigers able to get a little bit of a cycle going and just slow down the Rams' momentum. Well, it took about eight minutes or so for Ridgefield to weather the storm. They held they held tight pretty good. They did manage, you know, McKinney managed to get four shots on goal, one of them going in the net. Ridgefield's only managed the has only managed one shot so far. But if they can get any, if they could just break out offensively and just try to sustain some kind of offensive pressure, not necessarily score, they got to they have to force New Canaan to work out of their own zone because if not, New Canaan's going to keep the pressure on and they will find the back of the net. Got a tiger without a stick. Thank you, Chris. Here to weather the storm is Chuma. Out in front, deflected, and Keegan had to make a save. A lot of traffic there, but it did get through to Keegan. Up top here's Morris. That's a whisker go that just missed on the right side. Out in front. Gamble couldn't control, but Anton Adding does. Morris again, and this shot blocked. Now Parcella working down the left wing. Cuts to the middle, and that's a whisker go, but that one high over the glove and net. And there's a, still a loose stick on the ice. Marcella stepped around to check, centering pass, couldn't connect with Van Weeks. 440 remaining. That takes a friendly bounce out through the neutral zone. The Tigers dump back in. The Rams are going to have to go the length of the ice now. If the Tigers have anything to say about it. And we're reaching a point that there's a seventh player against Nukana right now, and that's the clock. The 422 left in this game. Not a lot of time. All the way around, waiting there is Cullinan. He has the game-winning goal as it stands right now. Will Forrest comes to help. And Quinn Hayes comes away the winner. Renito controlling now, and he finds McMahon. McMahon through the middle, trying to control the puck again. He's all the way around, and the arm goes up. We will see a penalty. Good hustle from George McMahon. And with four minutes remaining, the Rams will go back 
on the power play. It was that nifty move as he came up the middle of the ice toward Keegan that really forced the penalty. I believe this is going to be a trip. That is the call. It will be Jonas Chang. The big thing there, Chris, you saw George McMahon keep his feet moving through the whole play, which forced the official to make a call. And that was the key. It was just a hustle by McMahon to keep the feet moving. And that's what we've seen them do. Like when they've been drawing the, when they drew the when they drew the penalties during the Ridgefield power plays, it was plays like that. It was that hustle, that hard work, that fresh that got, I don't know if it was frustrating or that just got Ridgefield into a bad spot. So the Rams still over on the power play tonight, but they scored just as the last one expired. That first unit out there is Morris up top. He's back to Adam. Active stick there, and it's poked away, and now it's Matt Walker going the opposite direction. Looking for help, and the shot is off the glove of Windis and sent up ahead. Too far for adding, but it's bobbled around. Finds Brooks Gamble as he'll gain the zone. Walker's done a good job all night at just getting a stick in the passing lane. Keegan with the glove save there as Morris was trying to send one for a redirection by Tyler Hill. Good concentration by Keegan. I don't think that got redirected, but it was close to it. There was traffic right there in his peripheral vision to distract him. Chris? And again, you see New Canaan, they're very stagnant on the power play. They're not moving very much. They're not, you know, what you want to try to do is you definitely want to try to get what little players are on the ice for Ridgefield off balance to make the power play work for you in your favor. Quinn Hayes with a big shot there that was kicked aside. And Weiss blew a tire trying to clear the zone, went down, so the Rams with an opportunity but squandered away as Hayes will reset again. Well, you could hear the pads on that last save by Keegan. There's Granito controlling. Hesitates a drop pass and then goes all the way around the net. Lost a battle on the half boards and this one cleared the length of the ice. Hayes with it. Up for Ben Webster, with 2.35 remaining and 35 on the power play. Ridgefield changed all four, New Canaan changed its front line. And they just got the defense to change as well as there's one more clear. Chris will keep an eye on the New Canaan net. As for when Peter Windis will head to the bench. Man with it. 15 to go into power play, Frank. An active sticks, all penalty kill have made life tough for the Rams through the neutral zone and when first getting into the zone. This passing has not been an easy thing to come by. But two seconds remaining on this power play as Keegan sprawls out to cover this one up behind his own net. Just kind of rolling around near the crease. Take the reset. Have a little bit of organization. You don't want chaos in front of you at this point. See when Coach Gore wants to use his timeout if he does. I Kane, don't think see it here, Frank. They lose that draw. He's got to be careful of the player coming out of the box. Forrest is out in the neutral zone, but a good job by Jack Webster as he went back to cut it off. Chuma shielded the puck momentarily, and at the laid off side now as Granito retreats behind his own net. Up off the half boards. Took an unfortunate bounce, and then the sophomore delivered a big check as he sent down Jack Stafford. McKinnon has to get this puck out of the zone to get Windus out of the net. And here's Jack Webster now, down along the left wing. A minute 20 remaining in the game. Gelnau wants the shot, it stopped in front. And then a backhander thrown towards the cage and bobbled down. A minute 15 remaining. Here goes Windus. Ben Webster with it, paused for a moment. As Tyler Hill tries to hold the line, but he can't do so. Hill had just come on as the sixth skater. Granito with it, looking for help, and then tried to shoot one that was canceled out. Back around and Granito controls again. This one taken by Van Wee, sent out towards the neutral zone. Opportunity forced, it's a little ahead of him for the empty net, off the post! Take it away, Van Wees now. Ben Webster guarding the cage and a kick save, but the rebound is buried.
They stayed with it after the post did Ridgefield. And it was on the follow up, even with Webster trying to play goal as best he could. Ridgefield seals it. Other Guys, the official scoring on this is Van Wees unassisted. At 14.26 of the period. It is a 3-1 score now with the empty netter. And we can only hope these two teams will get to meet again in the postseason as this was one of the best hockey games we have seen far and away this season. No doubt, no doubt, and it was as good an effort as I saw when I, when I saw Ridgefield beat West Haven a few weeks ago. Walker lets one go well wide. Is everything else just a formality at this point? I would sign on to watch these two teams play anytime. Morris and Signorelli exchange a couple of words at the end of this one. But the Tigers able to celebrate a 3-1 win as they remain undefeated in the FCAC. They'll hold on to that number one state ranking and will improve to 14-1 on the season, probably number one in the CIAC rankings as well. Let's step aside quickly when we return. Chris Kalen will be joined with our player of the game. We'll have the final analysis. All coming up next from the Darien Ice House on the HAN Network. a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care, Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The iPark building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. Get a fresh start to the new year by shaking up your meal routine. Walter Stewart's Market is your local source for a delicious selection of fresh and convenient salad shakers. Like Southwest Salad with Chicken, Cobb with Organic Chicken, Power Vegan with Fruit and Quinoa, Greek Salad with Tabbouleh, and Grilled Shrimp with Hominy. Grab one from our salad case or order from our deli today. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handyman CD. At the Milford Bank, we offer an extensive selection of lending products and services to meet virtually any need. Submit your application online in our Mortgage Web Center. Start to finish, you can apply for a loan in as little as 10 minutes. Our knowledgeable and helpful staff are available to meet with you at your convenience. To learn more about what we can do for you, stop by one of our Milford Bank offices or visit us at milfordbank.com. The Milford Bank, always there. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Discover a world of wellness in the heart of New Canaan. Halo Studios, New Canaan's first collaborative wellness center, offers you the freedom to choose from the best and latest health, fitness, and wellness options. 
Inside Halo Studios, you'll find all the wellness experts you need at places like Halo Fitness, Priority Wellness, and Sama Yoga Center. Come by for a free wellness assessment, open seven days a week at 45 Grove Street. For more information, visit halostudios.com or call 203-594-9909. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Recently renovated and home to one of Connecticut's largest indoor turf fields, InSports is a multi-sport recreation center providing state-of-the-art facilities for league play, camps, and youth programs. Sign your child up now for InSports Future Stars Basketball Academy, teaching skills on the basketball court for boys and girls ages 5 through 9. Visit InSportsCenters.com for more information on this seven-week program. And for adults, Spots are also still available for our men's 30 and over and 40 and over leagues. Like and follow us on Facebook. Whether you're looking for the freshest seafood, the perfect steak, or want to share delicious appetizers, look no further than the Stone's Throw in Seymour. Chef Peter Hom has more than 30 years of experience creating original recipes in his American eclectic style. Our dishes are made from scratch with fresh local ingredients that pair perfectly with a seasonal craft beer, a signature cocktail, or your favorite wine. When you visit our Riverside location, you'll feel like you're on vacation when you're only a stone's throw from home. Visit us on Roosevelt Drive in Seymour or at stonesthrowct.com. I'm Frank Granito. And I'm Donald Ng for the HAN Network. Tune in to Nutmeg Sports Monday through Thursday, where we bring you all the top stories from Connecticut sports. From highlights to player interviews and expert analysis, no one gets you closer to Connecticut's games than Nutmeg Sports. Nutmeg Sports, now Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. on the HAN Network. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached more than 2 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Back on the HAN Network, the Richfield Tigers, 3-1 winners tonight over the New Canaan Rams, and a big part of that effort was our player of the game, Sean Keegans. He joins our own Chris Kalen right now. Thanks, guys. The one thing coming to this game, you know, you guys number one ranked in the state, New Canaan ranked number three. What challenges did you feel that was going to pose for you? Uh, well, New Canaan's always a great team. They always come out wrestling, and no matter their position, they're always one of the best in the state. Uh, we never really look at rankings. We always just take one team at a time, try to play our hardest. And as long as we can get those things done, we usually come out with wins. Now, the team was very physical in that first period. Canaan came at you guys hard. They tried to put the pressure on. You guys stood tall. Yeah, they definitely came out hitting. I think uh, it caught us a little bit by surprise, but nothing we can't handle. And I think we responded very well to it, got back up to their level, their physicality. And I think that's really what helped us prevail. Now, for you in particular, you had a couple of breakaway goals, and you stared them down. You know, when someone's coming at you like that, what's going through your head? Um, I think what's going through my head, like many other great players, is I got this. This is my time to shine. And I never really have any doubts, and I think that's a really big key. Just confidence and knowing my ability is really that strong, and I'm able to make those stops really helps me make those stops in the end. Early on in that third period, New Canaan came in. They put the pressure on you hard. They put the pressure on you early. How were you guys able to weather that storm? Uh, we have really strong defense. They do a good job of keeping the shots to the outside for me. So when those shots come, it's pretty easy for me to control. They get those pucks out of the middle. So even if there is a barrage of pucks, my defense does a really good job supporting me and getting those pucks out of the middle and keeping the chances to minimal. Sean, congratulations on a great win. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Guys, that's Sean Keegan's in the New Canaan Rams. Back to you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Sean. And uh, as good as Keegan's was, and he played phenomenally, John, uh, there's a five-minute window where Ridgefield took control of this game, but uh, special teams, we're, we're going to be talking about it for so long now. Second game in a row where the Rams just didn't give themselves a chance because of how much time they sp- spent in the box. You can't spend the whole night a man down, and, and that's what hurt Ridgefield. And you just had, or what well, hurt New Canaan, excuse me, and Ridgefield just played its game. They played physical enough to win. 
they were precise on the passing of the shots. And Keegan said he was confident, and his play proved it. I mean, he just stood in the face of every New Canaan charge. And by no means am I saying that New Canaan lost this game and Richfield didn't win it. Because what the Tigers did successfully through two periods of play, they didn't allow the Rams to scoring areas. They didn't let the Rams get comfortable. They didn't allow them to get in sync. Richfield took control of this game. Even when we were battling 0-0, it was Ridgefield's game to lose because they were setting the tone. They capitalized on their opportunities, and Chris, in the end, they were the better team tonight. They deserved to win, but what a hockey game we saw. And one thing that goes unsaid, both teams 0 for 5 on the power play. So, I mean, New Canaan got their goal just after the power play ended. So and you talk about, what, a few seconds? It was just enough time for Ridgefield to get a player out there and it didn't make a difference. It was a lot of fun. They are definitely two of the top teams in the state. Richfield now holds sole possession of first place in the conference. Both teams still in line to get that first round bye, but uh, who wants to draw the three seed coming into that second round now is the big question. Well, right now it's, you know, New Canaan's. Looking at it, Richfield's held serve on both games so far. At the way it looks, these two teams are going to lock horns in the FCAC finals. I hope so. I want to see this. I want to see these teams again. I mean, like last year, it was outstanding. A goalie for St. Joe's who got extremely hot and rained on Darianne's parade. For Ridgefield, I don't see anybody other than New Canaan giving them that type of challenge. I really don't. John, final thoughts. Uh, like I just said, I want to see these teams play again because they've, they've had two great games, entertaining. It, it was great hockey tonight. I want, to, I want to see another 45 minutes of it. New Canaan is on the road tomorrow night against Wilton. Ridgefield takes on Norwalk next. It's three in a row for the Tigers over the Rams. They'll remain the number one team in the state. For Chris Kalen, John Kovach, our director, Eric Gendron, I am Frank Renito. We're back with you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Your coffee break with Kate Chaplensky. CT Pulse with Josh and Kate at 12.30. Kevin Coleman joins me for Nutmeg Sports at 2. And then we've got Darian and New Canaan and Boys Hoops coming through Thursday night. As always, right here, your home of FCX Sports, the HAN Network.